We don't want anything in our life to take the place of God, and we don't want to be a stumbling block to others. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dr. Hester Speaks, a Women of Integrity ministry channel. Welcome back subscribers. I am so excited to be with you again this week. And welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome to the Women of Integrity community. And thank you for your support of this channel. If you're visiting for the first time, please be sure to hit the subscribe button right below this video frame. And be sure to hit the thumbs up button, the like button, because it tells YouTube that you're in support of this type of content across their platform. And it helps us to produce more content to support women. If you're on this earth, God has given you a purpose. He's given you a voice in certain areas because there is a need. And I'm excited because God has given me this channel as one avenue for fulfilling my purpose here on earth. My name is Dr. Hester and I'm a life coach, I'm an educator, I'm a conference speaker and an author. And this channel is dedicated to developing women of integrity, all for the glory of God. Because we believe His Word that says that He knew you and I before we were formed in our mother's womb. He gave you a divine purpose, a divine passion, and a divine path. And He wants you to know the truth about your God-given identity. And our goal is to help you facilitate your personal development in all of these areas. Today, we have an exciting topic for you. A topic that will help many, many women. We're going to talk to you about oversharing. Our topic today affects many of us oversharing personal business. We're going to look at how this behavior can hinder our progress, hinder successful projects, hinder personal growth, and hinder personal development and positive relationships. And the goal of this video is to expose the tactics of the enemy of God who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We're going to take an authentic look at oversharing the wrong thing at the wrong time with the wrong people. Although you have been given a God-given vision, many women find themselves discouraged from moving on to execute and follow through with that vision because they share too much too soon with the wrong people. And when you share too much too soon with the wrong people, this sharing results in disappointment and a sabotaged dream. For example, remember what happened to Joseph? Joseph shared too much too soon to the wrong people. And the wrong people just happened to be his brothers. And this oversharing resulted in jealousy and a plan to end his life because his brothers did not want him to succeed or to progress. And when you overshare, you give those individuals the opportunity to manipulate and control your narrative. Keep in mind that we have a real adversary on this earth. 
and he desires to render you stuck. And one of the tools that he uses to render you stuck is deflection. Deflection through jealousy and comparing yourselves to others. Deflection through insecurity. Deflection through manipulation and deflection through the spirit of control. Your growth is now interrupted because your focus is now shifted from yourself to others and competing with them as well. You become too concerned with what God is doing in the lives of others rather than being concerned with what God wants to do in your life. But guess what? There's an antidote for this. So get your pen and get your pad and let's get started. Let's let God show you what to share, when to share, and with whom to share. Are you ready? Let's go. We have three specific topics today, and they are, number one, the pitfalls and consequences of oversharing. Number two, setting healthy boundaries and exercising wisdom. Number three, the root of impulsive sharing. When you share personal information indiscriminately about yourself or about others, this can lead to gossip and betrayal of trust, which can have negative consequences for trusting relationships. Proverbs 11 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Oversharing personal information can lead to broken trust in relationships because people may feel overwhelmed or uncomfortable with the nature and the amount of information that you're sharing. And some of that information may in fact be confidential and untrue. Oversharing also has a potential to cause others to view certain individuals in a negative light because what you are sharing now changes the perception in someone's spirit and mind about that individual, which, by the way, is unconfirmed and maybe untrue. It goes without saying that Christians should not gossip. <laughs> but it bears repeating, since you and I know that it happens. But you and I, as Christians, want it to stop. Amen? And we also know that if you want to know something about someone, a man or a woman of integrity should approach that individual directly. And just to confirm the meaning of gossip, Gossip is any unconfirmed information or report received about someone through conversation. And unconfirmed means the conversation has not been shared directly with the object of that conversation. Let's look at it another way. Would you feel comfortable telling it to God? And could you guarantee to God that that information that you've gathered is true? If the answer is no, then it's gossip. So with that being said to all you fellow leaders out there, gossip is not a decision-making tool, nor is it a tool for strategic planning. Leaders of integrity confirm their communications with all parties nor is it a tool for strategic planning. You know, I have formulated many successful strategic plans, and none of those successful strategic plans were formulated through gossip. They were formulated on facts, where you are now and where you want to be. 
They have to be measurable. And there's no way to measure gossip. Because if they are not, there's a high probability that it will bring harm to others. And none of those entities are solid when gossip is utilized. And there's no way to strategically measure gossip. Sharing too much could lead to misunderstandings and it could lead to misinterpretations of your intentions, of your character, because you're sharing the wrong thing at the wrong time. And it's important to consider the accuracy of what and how you share with others through judicious and discernment in communication. Proverbs 15 tells us the heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Oversharing can make you vulnerable to manipulation, exploitation, or judgment from others who may use personal information against you. And you're vulnerable because you're relying on gossip to make important decisions. Manipulation because if the author of your gossip is your primary source, then they have power over you and they know that they can manipulate you to do anything. And exploitation and again, if the author of the gossip or oversharing is your source, then it's only a matter of time before you will be exploited, which means misused, corrupt, or broken. Proverbs 10 also tells us speaking too much can lead to trouble, implying that oversharing may not be wise. And Proverbs 4 advises us to guard our heart. Because sharing too much personal information could potentially expose your heart to unnecessary harm. God's Word tells us the importance of honesty, integrity, and humility, as well as the consequences that can arise from deceitful actions or sharing personal affairs in a negative way or deceitful manner, leading to betrayal and injustice. God gives us a system by which to operate, and all we have to do is follow it. To prevent impulsive sharing, it's essential to set healthy boundaries and exercise wisdom. And here are some ways to do so. Before sharing personal information, pause and reflect on your motives and the potential consequences of your disclosure. Jezebel, Delilah, and Potiphar's wife. Let's look at them for a minute. Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab in the Old Testament, is known for her manipulation and deceitful actions. Jezebel orchestrated the false accusation and subsequent stoning of Naboth in order to seize the vineyard for her husband. Her deceitful actions led to severe consequences for both herself and her husband. And then there was Delilah in the book of Judges. Delilah was a woman who shared too much and ultimately betrayed Samson. Delilah was bribed by the Philistine rulers to discover the secret of Samson's strength. Despite Samson's refusal to reveal his secret, Delilah continued to press and press him. Eventually, Samson told her that his secret came from his uncut hair. Delilah then betrayed Samson by having his hair cut while he was asleep, leading to his capture by the Philistines. Ungodly motives were present. Similarly, 
Potiphar's wife in Genesis. Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce Joseph while he served as a servant in their household. And when Joseph rejected her advances, she falsely accused him for trying to assault her. She then shared her false story to others, leading Joseph to be unjustly thrown into prison. Motives, selfish motives. Try your spirit. Be sure you're not being influenced by external validation. You know, I spent many, many years, too many years, trying to please other folks. And what I discovered was that God loved me. And he loved my desire to be better. I found a wonderful person, one in whom God has entrusted with lots of experiences that he wants to share with others. And when you get to that place, your jealousy problems and your insecurity problems will dissipate. God will work with you so that you could use your testimony to usher others to Christ. God is there for you. You have direct access to our Heavenly Father. Listen, when you get to the gates of heaven, all of the people that you're trying to please will not be there. No one will be able to tap you in. It will just be you and your deeds. And your excuses won't matter. And while you're here on this earth, he's going to give you all of the chances and all of the resources that you need. So rather than seeking external validation, appreciate the you that God has created. Because the you that God has created is good and someone with whom he's well pleased. So get to know her. The next thing is to choose your confidence wisely. You know, no doubt about it, there are times when you need a confidant here on this earth. But you've got to be selective about whom you share your personal details. Not everyone needs to know about your innermost thoughts. You know, years and years ago, God gave me a vision of what he wanted my friendships to look like. And one of the things that he did immediately was to make it clear to me in my spirit that I was not to have a best friend. And listen, uh, God has given me this YouTube channel uh, to share some things to people who need them. So what I'm getting ready to share with you is going to help someone. So God rearranged my relationships and he gave me two reasons why. Because I had to have a girlfriend. I had to have a best friend. So here's what he told me. No more best friends. No more best friends. And I thought it was very, very harsh at the time. This has been years and years ago. And then he gave me two reasons. The first was based on the fact that God is a jealous God. And the soul ties to a best friend will take the place of his position in your life. That's what he told me. Because you will go to her when you should come to me. And so my thinking was, well, God, this is my friend. And when we get together, she's a Christian, and we, we talk about you. You're, that's the problem. You see, that's the problem, my dear. You talk about me when you should be talking to me. God is a jealous God. He demands loyalty from those he loves and he redeemed. He's holy, he's righteous, and he's praiseworthy. And we, as his children, are obligated to 
protect his honor and his glory. So that was the first reason he gave me. The second was, I don't want you to become a stumbling block to others. If you have a best friend and others are looking at you and looking at your life and rely on your stability, when you tell me that you have a best friend, that sends a message to others. It tells them that your life is not directly coming to me now. You're not directly coming to me now, but you now have a sidekick. You now have a best friend. So that message to people that are looking at you says that they not only come to you, but they have to go through your best friend. Because that when they come to you, or when they look up to you, they have to consider your best friend. It puts others on the spot. So now, the eyes of those who are looking at you are distracted from me, you see. They're distracted from me, and now they're considering your sidekick. And let me put it another way. <laughs> if your best friend comes to you, and she tells you that she has been offended by this other woman, you're going to feel some kind of way. You're going to feel some kind of way. So now we have two people who have information, unresolved information about another. About another. So now we've got a conflict. So how are you going to reconcile that? Are you going to be loving and caring to that person that offends your best friend? You see, so now we have the eyes of others who look up to you being confused by that message. And we don't want to be a stumbling block for others. So if you tell someone that this is my best friend, that's sending a message to them that uh, they have to act a certain way around your friend. That's a stumbling block. You're taking their eyes off of God and you're, you, you're giving them another level to, to, to look at. You're giving them something else to consider before they're accepted by God. That's a stumbling block. That's a dilemma. You see, there's a conflict here. You see, there's an interruption here. You see, and that's the second reason that God gave me. No best friend. Listen, he allows me to have colleagues. He allows me to have confidants when needed. And he allows me to have sisters in Christ when needed. And he allows me divine connections. Those four things. And guess what? They are sufficient. We don't want anything in our life to take the place of God and we don't want to be a stumbling block to others. So practice discretion. <laughs> you know, not you don't need someone under you every minute of the day because not everything needs to be shared with a person. Some things need to be private. Some things just need to be between you and God. And at some point in your life, you have to make it very clear that you have boundaries, clear boundaries that does not infringe on what God has asked you to do. Number three, the root of impulsive sharing. You know, the root of impulsive sharing often lies in seeking validation, venting your emotions or lacking boundaries. Because when you seek external validation, you're looking for external approval and we already talked about that. And venting emotions often comes from being frustrated because you don't measure up to the standards that others have set for you. And so now you are comparing yourself to those standards. 
You know, I talked in another video about the Mean Girls Club. So you have to be careful and make sure that your standards are not attached to the standards of the Mean Girls Club. Your standards will become unclear and you will become accustomed to listening and receiving and acting upon oversharing and upon gossip just to fit in. So ask yourself, was oversharing modeled within my household? Or is this behavior present among the friends that I associate with right now? They may be Christian friends, but even Christian friends can normalize bad behavior. And if it's normalized, it's going to continue through you. Being reared in a certain household when, once you reach a certain age is no excuse for bad behavior. I once heard Maya Angelou say, once you know better, you do better. Now, I don't know if she's the original author. That's a statement of, of wisdom. And it means a once you understand that something was wrong, <laughs> then it is your responsibility to change the trajectory of that and do your best to make it better. And you can do this through love and you can do this through respect and you can do this through honoring those who exhibited those bad behaviors. But you can't, what you can't do is normalize it. What you can't do is pretend it didn't happen. Because when you pretend it didn't happen, you're going to repeat it. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because if you are associated with a group of women who proclaim to be Christians but operate in, the, in this shunning and the snubbing spirit, then you're going to be held accountable as well if you participate. So it is important to recognize the root of your behavior, the root of this oversharing and the root of this gossip. It is okay to love imperfect people. Isaiah 59 tells us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, we will lift up a standard. So by understanding the underlying reason for your sharing habits, you can take steps to address them and cultivate healthier communication patterns that pleases your Heavenly Father. In summary, the Bible gives us instructions about wisdom, discretion, confidentiality, and how guarding our heart can be applied to guiding our behavior. It is important to use discernment and consider the potential consequences before sharing or receiving personal information from others. Always consider if the sharing is from a divine connection or if the sharing is an impulse that's rooted in motives outside of God's will. Remember, it's essential to strike a balance between openness and discretion when sharing personal information. By setting boundaries, exercising wisdom, and understanding the root causes of impulsive sharing, you can foster healthier relationships, personal growth, and success in all areas of your lives. So in review, we've discussed the pitfalls and consequences of oversharing, seeking healthy boundaries, and exercising wisdom, and the root of impulsive sharing. So in conclusion, Thank you for being with me today. I hope you have been blessed. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button and comment. And tune in next week for more information on personal 
development. Also remember that you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, and X. And you can also reach me at www.drhesterspeaks.com. Check out the stores and the affiliate links. So, until next time, you stay blessed and keep the light shining. See you next week.